if I knew then what I know now, I wouldn't have bought that tea when I was 19 years old. Mm. I would have invested in a piece of land somewhere and not look at it till probably 10, 15 years down the line and know that my money would have doubled, tripled, flippled. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I can just cash in on it. Where's the tea that now? <laughs> don't remind me. <laughs> don't remind me. <laughs> estate is one of the keys to wealth creation. Way back from time was time, property and land has always been a measurement of wealth. And not only that, owning your own home also gives you a sense of security and pride. I'm Kalila Reynolds and welcome to The Property Source, powered by Remax Elite Realty. In our first episode today, we'll be talking to Jody Ann Myrie, Remax Elite Realty agent, about buying your first property. Hi Jody Ann, welcome to The Property Source. Hi, thank you for having me. So I am very pleased to be working with Remax Elite Realty to bring our viewers this amazing podcast. But you are from Remax, so tell me what is it? What do you guys do? What are you all about? Well, Outstanding Agents brings outstanding results. We have been operating in Jamaica since 2009 and we have over 30 years of experience. Remax Elite operates in several regions worldwide. You'll see us in the States, you'll see us in Canada and here in Jamaica and the Caribbean. And I must say that we have been topping the charts in real estate because 2022 we received the award for most MLS sales in real estate in Jamaica. And that's a big deal. Oh, congratulations. On behalf of the company, we thank you. <laughs> Here's your award. <laughs> Always choose Remax. <laughs> awesome. All right. So when you say agent, right? Is mm -hmm. an agent the same as a realtor? Yes. You can either be a salesperson or you can be a dealer. However, it's stages. So you start out as a salesman and you have to operate under a dealer until you can then graduate after some time to doing the dealer course to then operate on your own. But the salesperson is one in the same of being an agent. So usually you'll receive some business cards that says realtor associate or real estate agent or real estate salesperson. It's just uh, interchangeably used. Okay, and all of them are at Remax. The best oh, are at Remax. The, the <laughs> yes. So we know that the real estate market is, in the words of Donald Trump, huge. <laughs> yes, it is. There's all kinds of real estate. There's residential, you have commercial, and then you have your apartments, you have your houses, you mm -hmm. have scheme, you have all you have sales, you have rentals. Oh my gosh. Yes. And it, um, looking at it as a whole, it can be overwhelming for any um, one individual. However, it depends on what you're looking for, whether you're looking to buy, whether you're looking to sell, whether you're looking something commercial, residential, investment, and Jamaica has been attracting a lot of investment sales yes. of late and the market there is pretty good. So it depends on what you're looking for, ideally. So is there anything that you guys specialize in or you do it all? Rentals, sales in both residential, commercial. Yes, those we specialize in. Okay. That sounds like almost all. Mm. <laughs> a lot. Well, we don't do property management. Okay. So. Not, not everything. Hopefully soon though, but as it is right now, um, rentals and sales. What's the real estate market looking like right now? Is it a buyer's market or a seller's market? That question is a trick question, you know, because it's very opinionated. From my experience, I can tell you right now, it's, it's a little of both and it depends on the product type. And as a product type in that you will have residential apartment products, you will have uh, townhouses, you will have villas, villa resorts. Our real estate market is very dynamic in that you'll have a property, well, two properties right across the street from each other, and they are at completely different value points. Mm. Um, and persons will 
misunderstand that a lot. That's why it's good to have an agent because they'll come in, oh, it's heaven deal, so it has to be valued at that amount. Mm -hmm. When really and truly, a lot of other factors are at play. There is the size of the property, what's on the property, you know. Is it a new build? Is it a new build? Is it Was it recently renovated? Yes. And then um, a lot of times the sellers want to ask for their property what it's worth to them mm. and not what the market is saying the property is mm -hmm. valued. You'll have a scheme that has over 40, 50 um, units and persons will be flocking it. And at that point, it is now the seller's market. Mm -hmm. Whereas you'll have a one-off property being sold. Norbrook, $125 million. Not really what the purchaser um, chooses to pay for that property, but what the owner is willing to accept. Mm. And then, based on how the advertising is going for the property and the amount of traction that the property is um, picking up, from there, you might have persons offering over the asking price and then it now becomes a bidding war. So there are different products that will attract um, a different type of market. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. a seller's market on the lower end of the scale, would you say? Um, and a buyer's market on the higher end? Typically. Mm. So let's say now I want to buy a property with my partner. Mm -hmm. I'm going in with a spouse or maybe even a family member, mm -hmm. somebody that I just want to you know, partner with because, you know, NHT allows you to, to pool your, your, your yeah. income. How do I go about that? And how is that different from me doing it as a single individual? As a single individual, based on your income, that's how you know how much spending power you have to purchase whichever properties that you can afford to. And I say afford to and not what you want because those are two completely different things. A lot of times uh, persons will go in with, the, with one concept in their head as to what they want to purchase in a property. And then when they actually go through trying to get their pre-qualifications from either the financial institution or NHT, as you say, they realize that but wait, I can't buy something for $50 million. I can only afford something for 30. Pooling or co-purchasing makes it much easier to acquire a property. And there are several ways to do it. Like you say, you, you can pool your NHT benefits. Mommy can give it to the son. She doesn't necessarily have to use it because NHT is now offering that um, option. And as well, in the financial institutions, it's easy as well based on the income capacity of both purchasers. Should both of your names go on the title? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. If you're purchasing a property with someone, unless you choose not to, which at that point it means that you're just giving the person the money to go and buy the property, then by all means, yes, your name should be on the property. You know, I know sometimes there's some finagling with whose name goes on the title no, because you want to, you don't want to show that you already got your NHT benefit or... Nah, <laughs> at that point, then it, deter it, it depends on how you guys want to acquire the property together, whether as joint tenants, whether as tenants in common, so on and so forth. So at that point, it depends on both purchaser and what they are willing to, to compromise on. Yeah, I know some people do it uh, as well. They get one person gets the mortgage, mm -hmm. but then both names still go on the title. Like, why would somebody do it like that? Uh, typically, that happens in a situation where one person's financial income cannot substantiate to carry the mm. mortgage. So that's usually how that happens. So what are the legal requirements to get everything done? All right, legally, money talks, so you need to have the money first. You need to be financially able to purchase a property, so that you need to prove. Your REMAX agent will have you fill out a customer information form, which is basically a capture sheet of all your basic credentials, your name, your tearing. You cannot purchase a property in Jamaica without having a tearing and I cannot stress that enough persons will come ready to purchase a property have their money and don't have a tearing so even if you're not Jamaican even if you're not Jamaican 
you have to have a tearing in order to purchase a property, any property here. Now, all of the information that is provided on that um, capture sheet is basically to go along with the identification that you are going to provide, the photo ID. If the photo ID is not issued in Jamaica, it has to be notarized and the original copy of that notarized for, um, ID, ID has to be presented to the realtor. They mm -hmm. have to verify that they have seen the original copy, not a scanned copy, not a photo taken and sent by WhatsApp, but the actual document has to be mailed to um, the brokerage's office. Oh, wow. Yes, uh, we are very strict. When it comes to um, identity, <laughs> we have to be able to prove that you are who you say you are um, when dealing with something as valuable as property. Once an offer is put in and it is accepted, everything else where legality is concerned is taken over by both parties' lawyers. So the agent brings you to the point of submitting your offer, offer accepted, and then from that point on, the lawyers um, draft their sales agreement and all legalities there on thereafter is handled by them. The good agent, the REMAX agent, will follow up on your process, you know, just to make certain that everything is going smoothly because a lot of things can still come into play even after an offer has been submitted. There is still the process of dealing with the bank. There is still the process of the valuation to be done because although you the purchaser would have done a valuation or the seller would have done a valuation the bank still would have to do their valuation so you might be purchasing the property at x amount and then when the bank checks it out with their evaluator it is two completely different figures and then the offset of that will completely throw off an entire sale if the purchaser cannot fill the gap right what if I'm self-employed though? All right, so if you are self-employed, the bank would require that you have an audited financial statement done and presented to them. They also would require a printout of your bank statement. Sometimes it asks for three months, depending on the institution. Uh, I know banks and credit unions and building societies, they ask for different things. Uh, they'll ask for three months, they'll ask for six months, just to substantiate the income that is coming in the account. A property title is needed for proof of the purchase of the item that you'll be buying, whether it be land, whether it be a townhouse, whether it be a house. A property title is needed as well for each. So that would be on the seller side? On the seller side. The seller has to provide proof that they has can to provide sell proof. this property. Yes. Now in providing that proof, earlier you said that more than one person can be on a property as owner. Mm -hmm. In order for a property to be sold, one person cannot say they want to open sell and sell that property. All parties on that document have to be in agreement that we want this property to be sold mm. in order for it to be disposed of. Does that cause problems sometimes? Oh that's boy. A, I saw it on your face, that's why I asked. <laughs> that breaks up families. Huh. <laughs> so that causes a lot of problems. So mommy wouldn't want it to sell and daddy wouldn't want it to sell and you can't sell this and you can't sell that. And no, it's the last piece of thing we own. And, Yes, it will cause a lot of problems sometimes. And then what you usually find happening is one party buys out the other or mm. it ends up in a court matter. Mm, mm. You know, one of the things that typically keeps people from buying property, that, that hinders somebody from buying a property, is coming up with that down payment. Um, so. The down payment is usually always a tricky part because some persons think that Oh, they need this big whack of money. Oh, mm -hmm. it's, I hear it's 10%. I hear it's 15%. Now, the standard legal percentage is 5%. It's not one set amount of money. Uh, I had a client once that said, 
the down payment has to be $2 million. And I said, $2 million? That's a very specific that, amount. Very, I'm like, Regardless where did you of get that? The <laughs> yes, I'm like, where did you get that? Because I'd love to purchase a property for $80 million and only pay down two. Uh -huh. Right? So it's based on percentage. So it's calculated at 5%. Uh, it's not something that is set in stone. I, the seller, you, the purchaser, can still come to our own agreement outside of that as to what percentage can be paid down based on leniency, based on we might be friends for umpteen years, you know, and, you know, you know the person, you can vouch for the person, you don't want that entire 5% down because they'll be getting it financed and so on and so forth. But typically, it is 5%. I've seen at least one institution offer 100% financing. Mm hmm but when you say but you said legally it's five percent, so how legally that five percent. No institutions that um, offer a hundred percent financing, the discretion is then um, based on the seller and their attorney. And I say this because sometimes the seller wants to know that you are serious and will not back out of the sale. So what happens is you put that 5% up front, mm -hmm. the institution sends over the LU for the same 100%, the money is held by the lawyer. Once the money comes over, then the lawyer refunds the 5%. Mm. Nobody wants to know that I signed a, a, an accepted offer form and then you back out mm -hmm. pending or I'm waiting on a financial institution to give me 100%. So even sometimes, if you're doing 100%, you still need to have money to put down. Sometimes. Otherwise, it is based on the, the agreement between both parties. So real estate is always a negotiation. Nothing is typically set in stone. It's really a negotiating process. Mm. And regardless, you have to have money set down because you have, you have your so you, you attorney's have closing, fees. You have attorney's fees as well. You have a, um, closing costs that are associated with the purchase of, and, and sale of any property. And I say purchase and sale because both parties end up spending to either dispose of or to purchase the property. There are shared costs as well that are associated with um, selling and buying a property also. Here's our property of the week. Hi viewers, welcome to 296 Alamanda Avenue. My name is Anne Fang. I'm the listing agent for this property. This house is a take on a classic Richmond home with modernized furnishings and renovations that will make this space feel brand new. Let's take a look. So as soon as you walk into the property, you're greeted with the open concept dining as well as the living area and you go straight in through to the kitchen that has its own island as well as a breakfast bar. So this space is actually an addition to the house. This doesn't come in the original houses. This is one of the modernizations or renovations that you can also add to the property. Right here would be the third bathroom for the home as well as the laundry to the side. Up in the kitchen here, you have the three main bedrooms as well as two bathrooms, the master, which has its own ensuite, and then a shared bathroom between the second and third bedrooms. This property not only features a beautiful home on the inside, but also on the outside. When you drive through the driveway, you're greeted with a luscious garden at the front with several different kinds of flowers and well-fruited backyard that has several mango trees, a breadfruit tree, and an avocado tree. This particular home has a sprinkler system in place already, so you won't even have to water the plants yourself. Everything is already taken care of. Thanks for taking the time to view this absolutely perfect property with me. As you can see for yourself, it is the true definition of a turnkey property. All you have to do is bring your suitcase and move right in. My name is Anne Fang, an agent at Remax. You can reach me at 876-869-9802 or on all social media platforms at realtor.ne. Thanks for coming. Bye. <laughs>
usually anywhere from 1.5 and I say as low as 1.5 because that's the lowest I have heard from as low as 1.5 to as much as 3 percent 1.5 to 3 percent mm-hmm. okay so let's say two let's call it two percent mm-hmm. okay so you need attorney for the real to know how much okay so the seller is the one that pays the real estate agency and not the agent. Mm -hmm. The agency then pays the agent. That is typically 5% for homes and for land, it's 6%. Okay. Uh, Developments, however, are typically lower. And why that is, is because it's not a one-off property. So it's like a number of units you're getting listed under the agency. So the negotiation then comes in to be less than the 5% that's typically charged. All right. So we're at about maybe 7% between realtor and attorney. Mm -hmm. What other costs are there? So there are the transfer fees. And then there is the... Is that fixed? Transfer fees, um, is a fixed amount or a percentage as well? Percentage as well. And the stamp duties, uh, most of them are percentages. Only a couple of costs are fixed. Uh, so we're looking at about 10%. Roughly. About 10%, 10 to 12% of the percent, roughly. You need to have that put aside in mm-hmm. cash somewhere. In cash somewhere, yep. In but addition the good to your thing is, payment. The good thing is... It's not all paid up at once because the process of a sale can take anywhere from as little as 30 days to as much as even a year. I've had a property that I the sale the sales agreement was signed the 4th of January 2022 and that sale did not close until the 19th of January 2023. Wow, what took so long? Uh, patience. <laughs> what took so long was the same situation that we were making mention of where the bank had a completely different valuation from what the agreed purchase price was. And so the purchaser could not get the amount that they need from the bank in order to purchase the property. They had to come up out of pocket with the rest. They were already in an agreement. They didn't want to lose the property. And so that was what caused the issue. Mm, I see. And then you have other things that can hinder the sale as well. breaches to the property that you were not made aware um, made aware of that were not documented as well so there are a couple of things that can slow down the process mm. so for our 20 million dollar home we need about two million put down for all the costs mm-hmm. and then about another million for your down payment mm-hmm. so about three million roughly three million mm. okay Good to good to have a figure in mind that you can just multiply depending on. The- Usually, most of the financial institutions, though, they give you a um on their websites. Mm-hmm. You can go they have on the mortgage calculator. The mortgage calculator, and it gives you a breakdown of the costs that um you would be paying back based on the percentages. No, the institutions are doing everything in-house for NHT. So right. whereas you would have to be going to NHT separate and then going to the financial institution separate, everything is done now under one umbrella, which is much easier for the purchaser. And it makes the process a bit more easily digested. So it works. So it's a win-win. Yeah, it's more convenient. convenient so we were talking earlier about purchasing as a couple, mm-hmm. um, whether it's family member or spouses purchasing together. Uh, there are different requirements depending on your age, for example. Yes. Like, let's say, what should a couple in their early 30s with young kids look for as opposed to an older couple whose adult children just moved out to be looking for? Okay, so for the older um, individual that's purchasing a property, the payback period would be shorter so Mm. usually it's calculated to i believe it's age 60. so the if you're 50 years old they're looking at you have an active 10 years of payback uh what will then happen if you're taking out a mortgage on a 20 million dollar property you have a shorter time to pay back that 20 million dollars so your installments are going to be way higher versus someone that's 25 years old purchasing that same 20 million dollar property that have uh all that um 
time to pay back, then their mortgage installments are way, way smaller. Mm -hmm. So you have to prove, the older person will more have to prove being able to pay that large sum each month for mortgage. And I stress that because any financial institution is going to look at your ease to live after being able, after mm -hmm. paying a mortgage amount of three, four hundred thousand dollars a month. Mm -hmm. So taking that walker change out of your your, um, your income, if you're only left with fifty thousand dollars, can you live off fifty thousand right. dollars per month? So there are a lot of factor, factors that would come into play, but ideally, shorter time means higher installments, longer time, shorter, smaller installments. Yeah. Anything else that we should know, Jodian? Always choose Remax. <laughs> A great spokesperson. I, I have to know. Say that. You get value for your money. Uh, we take the time out in making sure that, you know, your needs are being met. And um, as agents, persons always have a tendency to say, uh, Oh, I have to be using five, six, seven agents because I can never get this one and I can never get that one. But you'll always call a Remax agent and get them. Mm. Yes, and we always deliver, which is why we are the top agency. That's, that's why you want to <laughs> We are the top agency. Yes. And I do hope um, from this little discussion, persons would have a bit more insight into what real estate is and, you know, not feel afraid to with their foot in the real estate market, be it for investments or, you know, just to secure your first home. I always tell persons, try and grab your, your first home early. It doesn't have to be ideally what you want, mm -hmm. but grab something early because guess what? Three, four years down the line, yeah. it would have appreciated in value because if I knew then what I know now, I wouldn't have bought that teeter when I was 19 years old. Mm. I would have invested in a piece of land somewhere and not look at it till probably 10, 15 years down the line, I know that my money would have doubled, tripled, flippled. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I can just cash in on it. Where's the teeter now? <sighs> <laughs> don't remind me. <laughs> don't remind me. <laughs> the teeter is no more. <laughs> the teeter became Betsy. Betsy. The old faithful. <laughs> ah, old and that faithful. property, well, yes. So Th That property would have been ideal. Mm -hmm. Trust me. Yeah, good to start. Thank you so much, Jody. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. That's it for our very first episode of The Property Source. Follow Remax Elite Realty all over social media. And remember to like this video and share with your friends. Also subscribe to this channel to keep up with all things real estate. And of course, let's get this money. Money. <laughs> <laughs>